guys and welcome back to my channel today is another one of the financing frugal living tips video i've done one in the past just recently if you guys haven't watched that one i would highly suggest watching that either before this video or after this video definitely go ahead and watch that i'll have it linked down in the description box below as well as an icard that one is my most basic how I budget or how to budget, how to manage finances on one income, even if it's more than one income, it's the most basic, but, uh, you know, I feel like I give a lot of tips in that video as well on how to save money. So I'm going to go ahead, like I said, and link that one in the description box. Today, we are talking about how to decrease your utility bills, how to decrease your electric bill and save water, save oil, uh, just be more efficient in your home. Who wants to just blow money on your electric bill or on your water or your oil, your air conditioning? Who wants to just waste their money there when you can save all that money and have it for a vacation? So I'm going to go ahead and share with you everything that I have done for the longest time to make sure that I have the lowest electric bill possible. Uh, that is one that I think a lot of people uh, might have wiggle room and be able to save a lot of money on. Give this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy frugal living financing tips from me here on this channel. I'll be sure to include more uh, here and there as we go as you guys request them. So yeah, let's jump into it. Your windows. Make sure that you don't have any leaky windows. If you do, obviously you can replace them. Obviously that can get expensive, but it might be worth it for you. Um, for me, this window is very drafty in the winters. So I either cover it with that plastic, like super attractive plastic, or I also, you know, you can get like draft stoppers or things at your hardware store to just slide um, right in where the drafty spot is happening. Otherwise, I absolutely love like these blinds. These go all the way up. These um, cellular shades honestly are pretty efficient um, at keeping like heat and cold out. So I love having these on all of my windows. You can have them up or down, obviously, but in the winter months, that's why you see, if you watch my channel, you'll notice this window is almost always closed because it does just push cold air into my living space and I am not all about filling my oil tank and being cold all the time. If the sun is shining directly through the window, that is when I will open up my blinds. I'll let the sun shine in, warm it up. Once the sun kind of moves away and the sun's no longer beaming in through the window is when I will go ahead and shut the blinds and the shades. The sun really does heat up the space a whole lot. So if you live where, you know, you need your air conditioning running constantly, make sure your blinds are shut so you don't have sun beaming into your house and warming it up. Or like I said, vice versa, um, if you live where it's cold and you want the sun to warm up your house, go ahead and do that. At nighttime or when you're not in the house, drop your thermostat by a couple of degrees. It will save you in the long run. It will save you on your energy bill. I promise you that. For the longest time, I never, I just set my thermostat and kind of forgot about it. I would leave the house and wouldn't change it. You really don't need to be heating your home as warm when you're not here uh now obviously for me personally i don't turn it all the way down because then you're you know your um furnace is going to have to run to keep up or your air conditioning is going to have to run to keep up and to get the house um, back into temp but two to five degrees every single night or every time that i'm away from the home for you know several hours it's going to save you a lot on your electric bill i would love to live in a 72 degree house year round 72 in the winter would be awesome. But for me, you know, paying for oil and oil prices and it's just not gonna happen. So I also do turn my thermostat down just below comfortable. If I'm having guests over, of course, you know, I'll make it comfortable in the room, but I do turn it down just a little bit and it makes a huge difference. I don't burn through oil half as much as I think maybe some others do. I'm still comfortable, but it's just a little frugal tip shut your lights off when you are not in the room when you are not in the house shut your lights off it's easy just every time you walk out of the bathroom every time you walk out of a room make sure you have all the lights off it's going to save you a lot of money when the lights are just on constantly running constantly burning in separate rooms um, you are wasting electricity 
train your kids, train your spouses. It's just, it's just so simple. Just get into the habit of shutting your lights off when you are not using that space. It will save you a lot on your electric bill, I promise you. Another thing I wanna mention is the type of light bulbs that you're using. If you switch your light bulbs, if you have like old running light bulbs, you know, make sure you're switching. They have so many energy efficient light bulbs and they're gonna save you a lot um, in the long run and they do last long. I personally use LED lights. I love the crisp white, but I think they do have softer tones too if you prefer that um, in your home, but switch out those lights. If you have old lights in your house, it's easy, it's inexpensive, and it will save you in the long run. Let's move on to this guy. As far as washing goes, Washing in cold water is gonna save a lot of money. It's like 75% of the energy when you're washing uh, goes towards heating up that water. So try to wash in cold as much as possible. It will honestly preserve the colors of your clothing. I haven't noticed any difference. My clothes don't come out still dirty. My clothes come out really clean. Another thing that's gonna save you a lot of money is making sure that you are washing a full load at all times. It's always full. You're not wasting all that water that's going into washing just a small load. It's just so not efficient. It's gonna cost you way more in the long run. Make sure you have a full load when you run it. Now, when it comes to drying your clothes, I recommend setting it for a little less than what you would think because if you set it for like the max amount on your timer and things dry 10 minutes before the timer goes off, you're really wasting a lot of energy. It takes a lot more energy to dry your clothes than it does to wash them. So just be mindful of that. You can always hang dry your clothes too. I just don't personally have the area for that. Um, and I prefer fluffing honestly in the dryer. But if you're gonna dry them, set the timer for less than what you think it's gonna need. You can always turn it back on, um, but that way it's not running unnecessarily. Next thing, in the winter when it is cold, if it's colder outside than it is inside your house, you keep this door shut. Even if it's just running in for a second and running back out, shut the door. It's very easy. Make sure you, I say train, train your kids. Make sure you teach them young and then they know. Don't leave the door open. You're letting cold air in. We're not, you know, like that old saying, I feel like everyone makes fun of dads, but dads it's moms too it's me i'm the hello i'm dad i'm not paying to heat the outside it's so true you're letting all that freezing cold air in whether it's through the garage or through the door or you know through a window or something make sure you just it's easy just shut the door and you'll save a lot of heat or a lot of air conditioning now when it comes to windows being open Personally, I love to open my whole house up when it's spring, early summer, and it's not too hot and humid out. Open up the house, get all that fresh air circulating. It makes you happy, at least it makes me happy. It keeps my home nice and warm, and I personally love fresh, warm air from the outside. Now, when you notice the temperature starting to rise and you don't want your home to be uncomfortable, keep all of your windows and doors shut, like we just said, the doors, right? keep them shut. Watch the temperatures on your phone, watch them wherever, you know, on your wherever you want to figure out what the temperature is, watch the temperature. Shut the windows when it starts to heat up. If it's nice and cool and crisp at night, open up all the windows and you'll have a nice cool sleeping environment. Then you want to trap that cold air in. In the summer, you keep your windows shut. That is something that I do often, and I rarely use my air conditioning. I know I'm a little crazy, but I rarely use my air conditioning even when it is a little uncomfortable because at night, I sleep with all of my windows open and I make sure to get all of that cool air in, and then I trap it in the morning when I check the um, temperature outside. I kind of gauge when it's gonna start to heat up, and then I close it right off, okay? So I've trapped all the nice cool air in, and it'll keep us cool for a little bit longer and I don't have to run my air conditioning. Okay, another thing I wanna mention, if you have a ceiling fan, use it. You can use it all year round. You can use it in the summer when it's hot to keep your air circulating and the temperature, you bring the, the hot air from upstairs down. You can reverse it in the summer and then um, have it going, I don't know, I don't know, counterclockwise and clockwise, depending on if you want to, the heat from upstairs to come down so that your air conditioning reaches your rooms upstairs. Or like I said, in the winter, you can circulate the hot air, 
to have everything nice and even and efficient. This is gonna be a huge energy saver. Now let's talk fridge and freezer. You wanna make sure your freezer is nice and full. Now I personally like to make it nice and full, but make sure you're not blocking the fan. That way it can circulate the cool air and nothing gets freezing up and breaks and all that. But you wanna make sure your freezer is fairly full. That way everything in there can keep you each other keep each other cool <laughs> that way everything in there stays nice and cold and your um freezer refrigerator is not running as hard to try to keep everything cold it kind of locks in the temperatures in there don't open this guy unless you know exactly what you want to get in there also same with your refrigerator Stop sitting there with the refrigerator door open. Know your inventory. One of my biggest tips is to keep it as organized as possible so you know exactly what you want. You can grab what you want nice and fast and you're not letting all the cold air out and having your fridge run 24 seven. Well, it runs 24 seven, but you know what I mean? Like trying to keep up. Stop letting this refrigerator door hang open. Sydney's like got it ingrained in her. When she wants to go get a snack, she basically has to know exactly what she wants. Uh, before she opens the fridge or she can quickly like look in there look at her inventory grab what she wants and shut it She doesn't hang out with the door open because I've just kind of taught it to her um, Her whole life because her mom is crazy <laughs> Let's talk dishes Again, like I said with the washing machine Same with the dishwasher. You only want to run it if it's nice and full get really good at making sure you have everything in its place efficiently. You're not just throwing big pots around so that you know, you're washing two dishes at a time. You really wanna make this as organized as possible, as full as possible to run it. Don't run it just with a few dishes or a light load. It's gonna save you so much. Also with hand washing, you can use up to 27 gallons of water and most Energy Star or energy efficient dishwashing machines that's a lot of words can only, you know, only use like three gallons of water. You're really saving a ton of water, a ton of hot water. So oil or whatever, electricity, whatever it is that you use to heat your water, you're saving so much by just using the dishwasher. You really want to save a lot of money and you're okay with maybe a little bit of wet dishes is to skip the drying cycle. You can go on eco dry. You can skip the drying cycle altogether um, and let them kind of dry naturally by the heat that's trapped in here. Let's talk oven and pre heating oven you guys I don't know if you've noticed but some of the recipes all of the recipes say preheat your oven before you start prepping well some of these things take a long time to prep whether you're cutting all kinds of vegetables and just it takes a long time to prep so your oven is just sitting here turned on and you're not using it my oven doesn't take that long to preheat so I'm really not concerned about it but it's running so long without me even using it while I'm prepping be mindful of how long your oven is preheating for. Not only is it gonna keep your house nice and cool without your oven running 24 seven, it's gonna save you on your electric bill a lot. Another thing I like to do is unplug those appliances that you are not using. Things that are plugged in use something called phantom energy, vampire energy, whatever, they suck energy still to them but you're not using them. So they don't need to be plugged in like the toaster, like your computers that you leave on sleep, like your TV that you leave on running. By the way, shut your TV off when you are not watching it. But these things suck up energy and you know, a couple dollars here and there. Now let's talk shower, bathroom usage. If you can change out your shower heads to a low flow shower head, that's gonna save you a lot of money, a lot of water if you're paying for water constantly or hot water, electric, like I said, keep saying electric and oil, depending on how your home runs. You're gonna save a lot of, a lot of money. So this was hard for me. I actually recently changed out my shower head and I went to a low flow, but not the lowest. I went to, what is it? I think it's a 1.8. I noticed a huge difference on my water waste. I'm not wasting as much water. And my hot water would always run out after like 10 to 12, I think it was like 12 minutes. So I had to get all of my showering done, everything. Like I could, I could never just sit there and enjoy the hot water, which yes, we should not do because it wastes a lot of you know water, oil, electric, all of the above but I couldn't even enjoy my shower. 
So this low flow shower head has seriously saved me so much. I can take my time a little bit, um, but I'm still not using as much water, even with taking a little bit more time. So if you, I mean, it takes an adjustment. It's definitely an adjustment. I think men might not care as much, but me personally, you know, with all the hair and I want to be like on fire while I'm in the shower, it, it was an adjustment, but it's definitely worth it to save money. If you have little ones who love to take baths, if you love to take baths, wonderful. They use so much water though. Showers waste a whole lot less water. So if you can start switching to showers more often or switch your littles to showers as they get, you know, the age appropriate, definitely do so. You can also shower with your babe, which I've never done because I need to be able to function. <laughs> But that's a really good tip. Getting to the really cute parts. <laughs> Make sure you don't have a leaky toilet. You guys, it's very easy to replace the little rubber flappers that come in your toilet. If you hear your toilet running constantly, it's an easy fix. You don't need a plumber, at least for my issues that I've ever had. When I have a runny toilet, I just had to take change the rubber flap. You can grab those at any Home Depot or Lowe's. And it's honestly so easy to change. I'm not gonna open this and show you what it looks like inside my toilet. But you get the drift. It's an easy fix. If you have a toilet that doesn't stop running, try that first. Speaking of saving water, make sure that you are shutting your faucet off when you are brushing your teeth. When you are doing the brushing, having your water just running is wasting so much. Shut it off while you're brushing. Shut it off when you are sudsing your hands and you're washing, you know, when you're singing the happy birthday song or whatever it is, make sure your water is not just running without using it. It's gonna save you a lot. Okay, so all of these things that I shared in today's video I do mindlessly I don't even think about it I don't feel like I'm stressing over it because it's just a habit shut the lights off when you come out of the room it's easy shut the water off when you're brushing your teeth like those things are just so mindless to me now um, that you know it's a way of life so I hope you guys enjoy it again um, and I will talk to you in the next one next video will be on Wednesday as well make sure you are subscribed because I do videos every Monday and Wednesday sometimes you'll have a bonus video at the end of the week as well. So make sure you also have your notifications turned on. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.